Not every product that a company creates always hits the mark. There are many Cricut products that for me just don't sit well with me. And on the other side, there are many Cricut products that I absolutely cannot live without. And I'm going to share with you my five favorite and five least favorite Cricut products. My name is Kelly Risso and let's get clacking. My number five most favorite Cricut product is the Easy Press. I only have the 9x9 Easy Press and if I had the 12 by 9 I'm sure that would be even better, but it's not available in my country yet, so I can't get one. But the reason why I love this is because it warms up so quickly and it's super portable. I have a very, very small room that I'm working in. So when it comes to space, I don't have space to have a big heat press out all the time. And if you're very careful, you can get enough pressure to make sure that your t-shirts last long term, as this is the most concerning point when it comes to using an easy press or using something like that. If you don't have the right amount of pressure, then your design is not going to stick on your t-shirt and it will start lifting off when you wash it. I haven't had a single problem with anything that I've made with my easy press, so I think I'm getting the pressure correct. And that's why it's at number five. Now for my fifth least favorite Cricut product, and that would be Holographic Iron-On. I know that this is a little bit controversial, but I have tried to weed Holographic Iron-On, and my cut settings have been correct, but to weed this Iron-On is a pain. While you are weeding the Holographic Iron-On, the glue on the film on the holographic part tends to separate, and it is a pain to try and separate from your design. And you do kind of need to separate it, because otherwise it will transfer onto your garment. It won't stick there, but it'll be a little flap that's just like sitting there, and it'll change the look of your design. If you've never had that experience with Holographic Iron-On, I'm very glad for you. Maybe I've just experienced a bad batch, but this is my experience with it, and so far it has not been very good. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, what is your favorite and least favorite Cricut product of all time? I'd really love to know if we're on the same page and if maybe we differ in some things. Now onto number four of my most favorite Cricut product, and that would be my mug press. I have had so much fun making mugs for all different kinds of occasions. And I love the fact that this mug press is aesthetical, so it looks really pretty and it's really easy to use. You can change the temperature and timing of this mug press. It is quite a complicated process, but it is possible to be done. But I haven't really had the need to change anything yet, as when you're using infusible ink with the Cricut mug press, they just work so perfectly together. And that's why I absolutely love using this product and making all kinds of mugs for all different occasions. I find any excuse to make a mug. My fourth least favorite Cricut product is the Smart Vinyl Roll Holder. Maybe this is because I don't use Smart Vinyl all that much, but when the vinyl rolls in and then rolls back, you've got to kind of re-roll it while it's busy cutting. Otherwise there's this big bulge, it sits up there, it looks funny. It gets in the way, it's bulky to store. And if I was using Smart Vinyl, I could probably just put something there to stop it from rolling off the table in any case. So it wouldn't really be that much of a problem. It is really expensive. And though being able to cut the vinyl off is very nice, I can very easily do that with my trimmer in any case. And that's why it's at number four. Number three on my most favorite Cricut products, you've probably heard me talking about it in almost every single video. And that's my XL Scraper. The XL scraper is essentially just a wider scraper to the small little one, which I ironically don't like or use pretty much at all. I'm able to get things off my mat a lot easier using the XL scraper, quicker, it's easier for me to hold. Maybe it's because I have fat fingers, I don't know. But I really, really like using this to be able to scrape things on or off. And I don't think I can see myself ever crafting without one. <laughs> It's relatively cheap, so it's not something that you have to splash out on and spend a ton of money on to add to your arsenal. So if you don't yet have one, and you, especially if you do a lot of paper crafting and you have lots of little bits that you need to scrape off the mat, the XL scraper is an absolute game changer when it comes to cleaning your mats, getting things off your mats, all those kinds of things. I love it. Number three on my least favorite Cricut products is infusible ink pens. This may be a little bit of a shock to most people, but I've heard many bad things about the infusible ink pens being dried out. I do feel that they kind of missed the mark a little bit with the pens. And I'm specifically talking about the 0.4 millimeter pens. The infusible ink markers are quite different. 
But the pens I have had very mixed results with. I've had two separate pen packs and the one was mostly dry and the other one was kind of okay. So you have to use these on copy paper. They won't work as well on sublimation paper, but still I find that they do miss the mark a little bit, especially when it comes to the price point. These pens are very expensive and it makes sense. They are a specially formulated pack of 30 different pens. So I can understand why they are expensive things. But in terms of what you get for the money that you spend, I just find that they don't quite hit the mark for me. And these two are a little bit of a bonus, but these are my two mid-tier Cricut products that I feel have both positives and negatives. And that is, of course, the infusible ink markers. So they are different from the infusible ink pens, as they are a one millimeter marker. When it comes to the markers, they are, of course, much thicker, and therefore I find they have a lot more juice in them, essentially. So the moisture content I find is a little bit higher. So when you're drawing with them, coloring with them, they do work a lot better. So if you are looking for an infusible ink pen option and you don't want to risk it with the infusible ink pens, rather try the infusible ink markers. I've had much better success with the markers over the pens. So that's why the markers for me are like a mid-level tier item, mainly because of the price point that is on them, but they are still a lot of fun to use for very niche kind of projects. And the second one is just infusible ink in general. Now we're talking about infusible ink quite a lot at the moment. And the reason for this is although infusible ink makes sublimation type items much more accessible for the market, as you don't have to buy a sublimation printer, buy a sublimation ink, paper, set up your color profiles, learn all of those kinds of things. Infusible ink is very much like HTV or iron-on where you just cut and apply it directly to a sublimation blank and off you go. So in terms of entry into the market, infusible ink is great as the price point per item is quite high, but your initial starting cost is significantly lower than if you wanted to get into sublimation. If you are doing lots of projects with infusible ink, it works out very expensive in the long term. As page for page, infusible ink versus sublimation, infusible ink is several times higher cost to what sublimation would be. As an example, when it comes to sublimation, it would cost you less than a dollar for a full A4 page print. But when it comes to infusible ink, you might look at paying three or four dollars for a 12 by 12. And while that is a little bit bigger in terms of size, with sublimation, your design is ready to go and press straight on. With infusible ink, you still have to cut it, weed it, and then apply it, as opposed to sublimation where you can just print and apply. But like I said, if you wanted to just dip your toes into the market, then Infusible Ink is a great product, which is why it shares the mid-tier spot with Infusible Ink markers. My number two most favorite Cricut product is the True Control Knife. Now this one is kind of shared spot with the True Control Weeding Kit. As I managed to get hold of one of these, they're not available separately in South Africa. So I had to buy it as part of a machine bundle and then import one from the US. But these things are amazing. At the bottom, they do have a little lock mechanism that locks the point into place and it cannot come out from there. When it comes to craft knives, I have several different craft knives that I've used in my time as a crafter over the last I don't even know how many years and the Cricut True Control Knife is my absolute favorite. I have experienced the problem where it doesn't lock the tip into place correctly. If that is what happens with yours, all you need to do is return it to the retailer and get a new one because that particular item is faulty. It's not supposed to do that. You can easily swap out these tips by just unlocking the bottom and pressing the bottom part in and then the tip at the top will pop out and you can swap it out for a new blade, the weeding tip, the little pointy thingy. I honestly have no idea what to call that little thingy. And then you have the hooked weeding tip as well. So it comes with a variety of different tips that you can use. And I actually like to have more than one so that I don't have to keep swapping them out all the time. I have one color for each different purpose. And that's why it's the second of my favorite Cricut products. Now, the second on my least favorite Cricut products is Smart Vinyl. 
The reason for this is because of the backing of Smart Vinyl. Most Smart Vinyls come in a matte finish, and if you're looking for glossy vinyl, you have to go for non-Smart Vinyl. What is Smart Vinyl, you might be asking? It is the vinyl that you cut with your Explore 3 or your Maker 3 machine. It just means that you can load it into the machine straight away without having to put it onto a mat. So it is automatically 33 centimeters or about 13 inches wide so that it fits in your machine underneath the little roller. The backing is a lot thicker than your normal vinyl and for this exact reason is why I don't like it. Because the backing is so much thicker, when it comes to peeling your design off the backing, I always like to flip the design over and peel the backing off the vinyl and the transfer tape. This is a lot easier to do, but when it comes to working with small designs on smart vinyl, it is nearly impossible to be able to do this. So if you are new to Cricut and you're not quite sure on how to work on these kinds of things, you tend to go for a small design and that makes your project a lot harder. I also feel that for the price point, it is a lot more expensive than other vinyls. And we're not gonna talk about Cricut versus off-brand because we all know that off-brand vinyls are going to be cheaper. I'm just talking about Cricut smart vinyl versus normal premium vinyl as they call it. You get a lot less bang for your buck. So you're going to get a lot less vinyl for the same price that you would pay for other vinyls. And that's another reason as to why it's very high up on my list of my least favorite Cricut products. My number one most favorite Cricut product, and that would be my Brea. It helps me on literally every single one of my projects that I use. The Brea you would use to help adhere your material to the mat. And this helps your projects in several different ways. Number one, it helps to extend the lifespan of your mat. Because it helps to grip the material onto your mat, you're actually getting more uses out of your mat than what you would have had you just tried to press it down with your hands. Number two, it's removing any air bubbles so that when you're cutting, the machine isn't cutting into those air bubbles and then causing problems with your design. Number three, it's helping again to secure your vinyl or your material to your mat, which means that your material is not going to shift around and come loose and essentially destroy your project. It is also nice and soft, so it won't damage your material in any way. And like I said, I use it for literally every project that I use. I will always make sure to bray my material onto my mat to help it stick down. And that's why it's my favorite Cricut product. My least favorite Cricut product is Glitter Iron-On. I know that this may be strange because everybody loves glitter, but I've used glitter from other brands and their glitter HTV or glitter iron-on tends to be a lot less rough. I'm a textures person and textures are very important to me. So not only is the Cricut glitter iron-on very rough on your fingers when you move your hands over it, it's not smooth at all, but also I noticed that the first time I used it with one of my hoodies, it would actually catch on the sleeves and it completely destroyed the sleeves of my hoodie within a day of wearing it. I had all these ruffles on them and all of the material was coming up. It looks awful. It's completely destroyed that hoodie. So that's why the Cricut Glitter Iron-On pretty much shot to the very top of the list and I've wanted to try and get rid of it ever since. But if you're wanting to learn about more Cricut products and what you should and shouldn't use, check out these videos here. Don't forget to subscribe for more Cricut videos in the future. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.